New Relic APM is more than just a tool to figure out what is going wrong in your app. It's a powerful way to help you get ahead of the curve. With New Relic, you can strategically improve performance by identifying critical components of your app to invest resources toward. This tutorial will cover understanding and establishing meaningful thresholds for performance, identifying critical transactions to monitor, customizing critical transactions performance thresholds and metrics. You may already be familiar with AppDex, but I want to go over this again briefly because we are going to dig a bit deeper into AppDex and talk about customizing thresholds in this tutorial. AppDex measures an application's performance based on the performance thresholds you set. This threshold should reflect your end user's expectations or goals you set for your app's performance. This performance threshold is called the AppDex T value. Setting the right AppDex T value is a critical step in monitoring application performance. A threshold that is too low will show all kinds of performance problems that may not actually be an issue, and a threshold that is too high may not alert you to very real performance problems. So how do we determine what we should set as our AppDex T value? To best answer this question, let's review how our AppDex T value factors into calculating our AppDex score. There are three general categories for measuring overall app performance in the AppDex chart. Satisfied. This means, based on the thresholds you set, your users are happy with your app's performance. Tolerating. And this means, again, based on the thresholds you set, your users are OK with the app's performance, but not thrilled. And frustrated. This means your end users are feeling like your app may be broken or just be a poorly performing app. In order for a transaction to be considered satisfied, it should have a response time of less than or equal to our AppDex T value. A transaction is considered tolerating if it's greater than our AppDex T value and less than or equal to four times our AppDex T value. Anything greater than four times our AppDex T value is considered frustrating. So if I set my AppDex T value at the default of 0.5 seconds in APM, a transaction that takes between 0.5 seconds and two seconds is recorded as tolerating, and a transaction that takes over two seconds to complete is recorded as frustrating. Both tolerating and frustrated transactions will lower my overall AppDex score. I also want to note that any errors in my app will automatically be recorded as frustrated. So even if my app is performing at the desired speed, a lot of errors will lower the overall score. So keeping all this in mind, what is the right AppDex T threshold for your app? Obviously, this is something you'll have to decide for yourself, but here are some guidelines to consider. Try the default of 0.5 seconds first. If you aren't sure where to start, using the default setting for a period of time is an easy way to gauge where your app is right off the bat. After a while, you may want to adjust the threshold up or down based on the resulting score. Consider the app's purpose and audience. For some apps where speed is really critical and you plan to invest resources in ensuring the speed, setting a low threshold makes sense. While for some other apps where speed isn't the primary concern, it may not pay off to spend a lot of time and resources on high-speed performance. In these cases, setting a higher threshold enables you to maintain an acceptable level of performance and get alerted if more serious problems suddenly arise. You can also think of the threshold you set as a performance goal. If the app in question has performance problems that you intend to invest resources in to improve, you may want to set incrementally lower thresholds as you make improvements to see how your app performs. Finally, if you still aren't sure what threshold is right for you, you can test out some different AppDex thresholds and insights to get an idea of what your app's performance score will look like. For more information on how to do this, refer to the tutorial AppDex Queries with NRQL. Okay, so I have my New Relic University Calligator demo app, which is based on a fantastic open source community calendar app. And I've already set some basic alerts and done a preliminary review of my app's performance. I plan to spend some time and resources improving my app's performance, but I need to target my efforts more effectively because it's not really possible or practical to tackle the whole app all at once. So I'm going to dig deeper and see if there are parts of my app where improvements in one area can impact the whole app. I will also want to identify critical parts of my app that matter more to my end users and make sure to address any performance issues there as well. I'll start by taking a look in my APM overview dashboard to see if there might be any obvious performance issues. Right now, with an AppDex T value of 0.5, my application has an average AppDex score of 0.96, which is pretty good. I can hover over this chart to inspect any dips or peaks in AppDex, which will show how many requests were satisfied, tolerating, or frustrated. Overall, it looks like my application's average performance is good as a whole. So next, I'm going to dig deeper to see if there are any critical transactions that could be improved. To do this, I'll navigate to my transactions page. 
From the initial observation, I can see that the event controller search transaction is taking up a considerable amount of time. I know that the search transaction is critical to the functionality of my calendar app, given that users need to search for specific events when they come to my app. And I want to make sure that my app search is fast and accurate. Because there are also several components of the application that use this search transaction, a performance issue here can cause problems with other transactions in my application, resulting in slow, poor performance overall. So this event controller search transaction could be a great candidate for my targeted performance improvements. But before I start overhauling any code, there are a few more things I can do to verify this. First, I can see right away that there is a lot of time being spent in rendering events table.html. It really shouldn't take very long for my application to generate an HTML table, so it's something I'll want to further investigate. At the bottom are a few transaction traces that can give me more details about what's going on in this transaction, so I'll click on one now. Here, I can see in the Trace Details tab that again, the major bottleneck for this transaction is the HTML table rendering. This is a good clue that there are some important performance improvements to be made here. But before I commit resources to fixing this, there is one more thing I can do. I want to spend some time monitoring this transaction to see how it performs over a longer period of time in order to identify the root cause. An easy way to track a single isolated part of my app like this transaction is to create a key transaction. By making this transaction a key transaction, I'll see data about this transaction as a subset of my app, complete with all the charts and data I would normally see, but focused completely on the single transaction's performance. This is a great way to really drill into a single element of my app and understand how it performs over time and under a variety of conditions. I'll also be able to set up alerts specific to this transaction and send alert notifications to the rest of my team so we can all monitor its performance as we set goals and make improvements. So to make this a key transaction, I'll click the Make Key Transaction button at the top of this transaction trace and give it the name Critical Calligator Event Search. Now that I've created my key transaction, I'll need to set some meaningful thresholds for this transaction. I need to identify both a backend app.txt value for APM and a frontend threshold for browser. I want this transaction to perform more quickly and I'm going to work with my team to improve its performance. However, before I start setting performance goals, I want to monitor this transaction to make sure the performance I'm seeing now is fairly consistent. So I'm going to set a threshold I think the transaction will perform well at and monitor this very closely. Based on the data I'm seeing right now, I think that the threshold should be 0.7 seconds in APM, and I'll leave the default value for browser. Now that the key transaction is set up, I want to take a look at the immediate data. I'll click Critical Calligator Event Search under my Key Transaction tab to go to the Overview dashboard for my new key transaction. Right away, I can see there's data for both APM and browser for this transaction. There's also a list of transaction traces along with the error rate. At the very top right of the page, I can see the AppDex chart for this transaction. This is based off the specific AppDex T value I had set earlier, and as you can see, this AppDex score is individualized to this transaction. This means that only this transaction's performance is being evaluated. No other transactions are contributing to this AppDex score. Now that I have this key transaction set up with my AppDexT values, I'd like to set up an alert policy to monitor the performance of this transaction. I'd like to be warned when my application drops below 0.8 for 10 minutes, and I'd like an incident to be created when the AppDex is below 0.7 for at least 5 minutes. I'll go ahead and add my team to this policy's notification channel so they can be notified when an incident is opened. Configuring this alert policy is helpful in not only monitoring current performance of this transaction, but is also helpful monitoring any efforts my team and I make to improving its performance. Now I'm ready to monitor this transaction more closely and ensure that I invest my resources and efforts into performance improvements strategically and effectively for even better application performance overall.